So, hello everyone. Um, last minute I decided to do this talk. I've come up from Bristol today and I want to show you and share with you uh, my project I've been working on, which is the PyBot. And I'll just give a little bit of background to how I came up with building this um, machine. And I was helping um, a friend of mine run some um, teacher training workshops last year, uh, which were aimed at kind of, in a single day, teaching teachers of I ICT how to teach with the Raspberry Pi. And I found it, I was, it was being led by my friend and I was observing as much as helping. Uh, but what I found really inspiring was the way very quickly he'd got non-programmers. Uh, they were teachers, but a lot of them hadn't programmed before. But within one short day, he got them programming with the Raspberry Pi, but also connecting the Pi to hardware. And he says one of the great things about the Raspberry Pi, and I totally agree, is the GPIO pins. The fact that you can connect it to all manner of different hardwares. And it's kind of built to do that. It's low cost, so you can kind of tinker with things and you can um, experiment. And that's partly what I started to do. And I also did it because I realized that that's a very effective way of teaching. That when you can see a result in the real world, it's a juicy carrot, if you like. So um, over the months, I've been running a, a local co-club in Bristol. And I've been starting to develop this more seriously. And uh, for the last three months, I've been based at the Bristol Robotics Lab, which is a joint venture between the University of West of England and the University of Bristol. And they're doing cutting edge research in all kinds of things from medical robotics to uh, human interaction robotics. And the one in the bottom left corner is something called the EcoBot which is a biological robot. Um, it's a pretty fascinating new world for me to, to be there um, because, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a bit um, surreal sometimes. Uh, the EcoBot, for instance, digests um, material from its own environment and is almost like a biological robot. And I've begun to appreciate that robots is really exploding at the moment. And uh, there's a lot of investment flowing into it, and there's a lot of great breakthroughs happening almost weekly. Um, so my personal little breakthrough, I think, came with deciding to quit my, quit my day job and pursue the PyBot as a, a, a way to um, hopefully form a, a small business from. The, um, the way it's designed is to be built uh, from a kit of parts. I'm just going to put him down. Um, so here's my uh, box which the kit comes in. And um, the idea is, is it's almost like an anti-product and I want it to be a stimulus for people to be creative with. So uh, the workshops I've run so far, um, I find that kids get really engaged when they have to do something with their hands and when they can build from just a, a, a hundred kits of a, a, a hundred parts which are all uh, small and rather indistinguishable to actually bring it together into a robot um, in a logical way um, is a great thing. I think that the, the kids find it really rewarding and enjoyable um, and basically all it needs is your hands, a, a small screwdriver and your brain. And you find that kids just, they start doing it. And uh, they don't need much prompting. Um, and they're very eager. So one of the things um, I've begun to see is how, I mean, I, I'm, I have quite a varied background, having studied uh, things like physics. And I actually trained as an architect, which is uh, different to robotics. but. I find that robotics is actually quite open at the moment. So the skills that I've brought have included things like laser cutting and, and dig digital making. 
And I've called it the PyBot because I, I love the Raspberry Pi and I think it's a great learning platform. But I also love geometry and the mathematics of Pi. So the, um, I don't know if you can see my box, but um, the, the idea of um, laser cutting and 3D printing is also something which is becoming more and more accessible. So uh, the, uh, part of the idea of the project is to kind of create an open platform where you can then customize it. So you could 3D print uh, your own custom pan and tilt mechanism, or you can, you can make it your own by using open technologies. Um, I'm going to do a little demo, if my assistants uh, are willing and able over there. Aaron? Yep. So I'm going to just show you quickly uh, a little test script, just to see it in action. Ready? Yep. So that's just a simple test script to check the hardware is working. It's not actually doing anything very uh, interesting. Uh, but already you can see the kind of hardware that it connects to. And uh, one of the main things uh, I chose to use the Raspberry Pi above, say, things like the Beagle Bone Black, is its high definition camera, which uh, is very capable. Um, so I'll go. I'm running out of time, uh, but this is my website. Uh, it's called pibot.org. And the tagline is, give your Raspberry Pi robot powers. Um, so the other thing I'm here today is to, to look for is teachers who may be interested to get involved in my Pioneer program, which is releasing a number of prototypes at an early stage to get them into um, real-world situations uh, and to use those experiences to feed back into the design and the continual development of the robot. So if anyone's a teacher and they may be interested in uh, buying a prototype, there is a cost associated with that. Um, the eventual kit is going to be aimed to be as low cost as possible. Uh, in the region of 70 pounds. Uh, the Pioneer Edition's uh, 100 pounds. Um, but that's because it's very labor intensive to actually build a hand built kit at the moment. Um, but if anyone wants to find out more about the robot, um, I'll be over on the Magpie stand afterwards. So thank you very much.